I'm Val Holder for UNCTAD Conversations in Barbados, where UNCTAD 15 will be held virtually. It's the first for a small island developing state and a first for the Caribbean. Right behind me is the office of the Prime Minister of Barbados, where you can discover another first. It's the first time in the 55-year history of independence of Barbados that a woman is serving as Prime Minister. Yes, We've made some strides, but there are still ceilings to crash through and barriers to knock over. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley will be holding center stage at this year's Gender and Development Forum at UNCTAD 15. So too will today's guests, who are at the forefront of gender empowerment, development and policy change. Professor, the Most Honorable Eudine Barito and Dr. Tanya Haynes are our guests on today's Unctad Conversations. So wonderful to be able to have the opportunity to sit down with both of you. This is a first because I think I've interviewed you both at different times for different topics. Um, so it's nice to be able to have you both in the same conversation. Um, interestingly enough, with UNCTAD, there's a lot of firsts. So first time for a small island developing state to be hosting UNCTAD. And we're doing so with the first time with our first female prime minister. Mm -hmm. But then interestingly enough, this is the first time in the history of UNCTAD where you have a forum specifically focused on gender and development. Where do you, would you like to start this conversation? Oh, well, first of all, thank you for having us. And I'm delighted to be here with Dr. Hayes. And I'd just like to say that we are just delighted that UNCTAD has found it fit to introduce a, a forum on gender and development in Barbados, the first time a Caribbean state is holding UNCTAD. And I'd just like to say that it is long overdue because there's so many misunderstandings, there's so many misunderstandings about gender and development and the, and the role that women play in societies across the global south. So I welcome this forum. I'm very glad that our Prime Minister insisted that there would be a forum on gender and development. And I invite Dr. Hayes to give her own reaction to the <laughs> idea of a forum on gender and development. Thank you so much, Professor Barito. I am very excited to be part of this process. If you think about UNCTAD's origins in 1964, with a mandate of rebalancing power relations between the developing world and the developed world, this Gender and Development Forum is long overdue. And you know, I think it's um, especially significant that it is being introduced when Barbados is host, when we have a woman as prime minister as well. And, you know, I think in particular, the Caribbean has a lot um, to offer to the world. So this is really um, just wonderful to be part of a historic occasion like this. I'm excited for the conversation as well, because I think for, I'm being in the media, right? Mm -hmm. I think for a long time, we've had conversations around gender, but we've really had the conversations on the surface. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we have gone deep enough before. And when I say we, I really include myself as a member of the general public mm -hmm. um, to really understand that when we have this conversation, it's not about what men are doing to women. That, that's exactly. the surface, <laughs> right? That's the surface part of this conversation. Yeah. It goes a lot deeper than that. So this has really opened my eyes already to, we need to start looking a lot deeper. So now we're looking at policy. Yes. So, so explain to us so that everybody understands the level at which this affects women on a day-to-day -day basis, but yeah. on a much deeper level. Right. And I'm so glad you started with that misunderstanding because often the work on gender, what are these women complaining about again? Or what is, or they think that when you speak about gender, you're speaking only about issues of violence against women. And these are there. But the, the reality is that gender issues are all issues in the society. It's about policy. It's about politics. It's about law. It's about economics. It's about trade. It's about development. And this is why the forum now on gender and development, the, the, the particular forum, 
place within an UNCTAD conference, and UNCTAD focuses on trade and development. But what is very exciting about this conference coming at this time, we are dealing with three crises. We're dealing with a global pandemic, which is a health crisis. We're dealing with an economic crisis that has been induced by the health crisis. And then we're dealing with a climate crisis. So you're looking right now, right now in Barbados and the Caribbean, we have had floods. We have had volcanic explosion. In Haiti, we had an earthquake. We have had droughts in certain parts. And all of these impact women and men differentially. And what we know in the, in, in the, um, the say, the health crisis, the pandemic, there are women on the front line. There are men on the front line too, but, but, but the majority of workers in the hotel sectors, in the tourism sectors, are women. So part of what we are trying to do is show the differential impact of different uh, crises and occurrences on women and on men, but also to highlight why it is important that we understand. We talk about the value of the work done in the care economy, and we praise all those who work in the care economy. But when it comes to shaping policy and putting money in policy, we don't put money in the area of the care economy. We just want to say that we value it, and it is very, you know, we respect the people who deliver in it, but we don't create the policy that really relate how much we value by the investment. When it comes to the investment, we think about the so-called corporate sector only. And we don't see that the key economy underwrites the society. And within the forum, there's going to be a lot of discussion on the key economy. And what we hoping would come out of the forum, and I'll, I'll turn over to Tanya, is, is the policies that would show how we can bring those things to the fore. So then let me mm -hmm. ask this question about policy making and mm -hmm. shaping policy. And this may seem like one of those surface questions too. Is it because women do not have a seat at the table? Is that what's happening? It's because historically men are the ones in the power positions to determine what policy will be? Um, I think it's important to start with the understanding that gender is central to how we structure and organize society, economies, labor markets. Gender is very central to how those things are structured. You see women clustered in certain areas of the economy and men in others, and you also have that differential valuing. So when you begin to expose these things as not normal or natural, but actually these are structures that are reproducing inequality, then you get to build the kinds of policy that make it, makes a difference. So absolutely, women and a seat at the table are, you know, that's important and that's the bottom line. But that is, for me, just the minimum. Yes. Because you don't just want women to have a seat at the table, but you want everybody who is at the table, including women, to have that consciousness that if you are not actively redressing inequalities, oppressions, imbalances, you are reproducing them. There's, yeah. no, there's absolutely no neutral space. There's absolutely no neutral policy. And so women ha should be at the table because... Quite they're frankly, part we're part of the society. You know, we're, yeah. we're part of the society. <laughs> but what the forum is bringing, of course, we're bringing a lot of very powerful women to the table um, in a range of different spheres from domestic workers to women who are, you know, creative industries, creative industries and women who are running billion dollar in investment funds all together. But it is the feminist analysis, the mm. understanding of the inequalities between countries the gender inequalities and, and, you know, the way things are fractured along racial lines, urban and rural, and mm -hmm. the confluence of all of that and understanding how these, this health crisis, economic and climate crisis, how they all, they're, they all share in many ways very much the same root. Yeah. I, wa I want to add something about being at the table to, to emphasize a point Tonya had made. We want women at the table, but it's insufficient to have women at the table if they don't understand gender relations or relations of power, just like men need to understand that, and they don't understand the tools of analysis. Because, because you don't acquire that by osmosis. You really should study it and attend conferences, and so this is why this is very important. The work Dr. Haynes and her colleagues are in the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, that is very important. Because if you, you, you can be at the table and not understand the dynamics, so you don't use the power of being there. But yes, women have a right at the table. But when you get there, you need to be equipped with the tools of analysis that would make your presence much more impactful. And, and, and when, I, I, when I'm thinking about this forum, it is like a crash course 
in gender and development studies and analysis, three dynamic days of programming that would create greater understandings for women and for men. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and continue this conversation, this education really, around the idea of gender and development. We'll be right back. So gender discrimination has really transcended race, religion, time. So there, so this really is about, and the conversation that we're having and the work that both of you are doing mm -hmm. is about narrowing the gaps. Mm -hmm. So um, what are some of the ways in which... Well, as I, I was listening to Tanya just now, and I agree and support everything she has said. The brilliant young women and men out there doing fantastic things. But as you rightly pointed out, there, there, there are gaps, and the gaps exist, especially as it relates to policy. There's an African feminist called Sarah Longway who has spoken about the evaporation of policy. In, in, in other words, you have this brilliant gender analysis that is done time and time again, and then you have policies, and somehow the gender analysis doesn't even turn up in the policy. Yeah, well, it, it, it doesn't work its way in. So I am reading some documents in preparation for some of the meetings, and they put a token paragraph on gender. And then the rest of the document is oblivious to all the rich analyses that has been that, 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 that have been completed. So, so, so this is where you get the policy evaporation. And the policies matter because the policies is what's going to affect daily life. So whether or not these young women do what they do, and they're doing fantastic work, then they buck up a policy that says this or says that and, and seeks to exclude, seeks, seeks to be exclusionary. And the, and the forum now is going to pay attention to all of those areas. The forum is going to show up how we, we don't have adequate policies as it relates to climate change, as it relates to investment strategies, as it relates to the blue economy as it relates to trade, as it relates to the creative industries. And so we, we want to highlight that. We want to highlight the beauty of Barbados, the talent within Barbados and the Caribbean, and the talent within the global south, the, the, and, and, and the brilliant analysis that also exists within the global south, with colleagues in the Pacific, in Asia, in West Africa, in Southern Africa, in East Africa. And they are in, uh, you know, energized with the same concerns that we are. Yeah, and I, I think for me, part of where policy fails is that it really is a justice question when we're talking about relations of gender and redressing unequal relations of gender, um, the development question. It is a it is fundamentally a, a justice question. So countries that we refer to as developing countries are really countries that have survived colonialism, wealth extraction, and are living in the wake of slavery, colonization, and empire, right? That is what, that is what those countries are. And so at, if you want to really transform um, a global economy, then it has to be justice-oriented. Otherwise, we'd forever be seeing, you know, billionaires would be building their rockets and blasting themselves into the <laughs> sky while <laughs> um, literally in a pandemic, the rich have gotten richer mm -hmm. and many people have seen their entire livelihoods devastated. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and small developing countries like ours are here struggling to have the kind of recovery that we would need and to have the kind of financial and in international financial architecture that would recognize our needs. Every, you know, the moment you are not absolutely abject, you are a middle income country yes, that is therefore no qualified longer for qualified for aid or qualified for certain kinds mm -hmm. of concessionary finance. You mm -hmm. can almost never mm -hmm. sort of catch your breath Right. And, and really ensure that your people are thriving as they need to. And for me, what, has to be, what we have to put at the center there is how this is a, this is a justice question. It's not just a technical question of how to do gender analysis or how to um, mainstream gender into systems that fundamentally oppress us. And, and fund us. Yes, exactly. You know, I've had the opportunity to talk to many female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship has become one of those buzzwords. Yes. And we know that a lot of times, especially in Barbados and the Caribbean, it is women who are attracted to 
entrepreneurship. Yes. And I think you mentioned earlier, we're looking at what? So women are the breadwinners in, is it 60% yes. of our households? Yes. But yet women, female entrepreneurs will tell you they, however, in terms of trying to grow their businesses, mm -hmm. don't have the same access to funding, loans, and financial backing as their male counterparts. Yes. What do we say to those women? What policies do we need to look at to help with that? Yeah, we say to those women that that is true. And we say to those women that we have to work on breaking down the barriers that exist, that we have to educate the men and women who are within spaces to allocate loans. Sometimes that, that, that differential in loan allocation has a racial imbalance in it. Let's not fool ourselves, where sometimes people get loans just on the basic of the complexion or the family or the connections. And sometimes they don't, they, the other people don't get it because they're women and they have to come twice as hard. And we have to say that when, when women do well, well, the economies do well. When women build houses, contractors get work. When women, when women are successful, a garage sell cars. So there's a sense of which they, there, there is a lack of understanding of the role of women as a, a, within the society and what they can bring to the society. And, and, and persons, women approaching persons for loans and for investment decision and having to jump through more hoops than say that men would jump through. Those are, those are legacies of a particular way of thinking that when Tonya uh, I spoke earlier about empire and colonialism and degradation. There's a pretty, and, and, and hence this is where the, 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 the policy makers, politicians have to be committed to ensuring that they tease through and disaggregate and pick out the threads of those policies that, that promote are allowed to flourish discrimination. But what women experience, it is true. I do know that because I once did a study on, on women entrepreneurs and, and, and I found out what they experienced. And these were not women in the informal sector. These were women who owned and operated businesses that were very much in the formal sector. And again, the forum will seek to bring those things out because often it is not a case of policy makers. Sometimes there's an unconscious bias and we have to help people to realize and flush out those, those types of biases that keep people back, keep women back for realizing their full potential and hurting economies and societies in the process. So as Tanya says, very much a justice issue. Yeah, and I, I wanted to say that I would want women entrepreneurs from the formal and informal sector. The Gender and Development Forum is a public forum, and I would want them to be part of the forum because I think there is a lot of energy, you know, dynamic opportunities for networking, a lot of excellent ideas, mm -hmm. and I don't want to give away too much, but, but I, I, I will say that, you know, if they come, they will learn about um, Womanomics Africa, which Womanomics is Africa, Africa yeah. which yes. is an initiative that is about building business ecosystems. So not just assisting women entrepreneurs as individuals, but that is interested in building an entire ecosystem across the entire value chain, promoting cross-border trade in Africa, where women have always been, yes. you know, central. And, you know, or, you know, if you come to the Gender Development Forum, you'd learn about Haitian women, um, Haitian women traders who are at the forefront of building more inclusive economies. They hold the society together in Haiti, the women yeah. traders. So I would say you know, open invitation to women um, entrepreneurs in the informal, in the and un, formal sectors, women, you know, women who are working, women artists, artisans, there's really, you know, the program is so diverse and the conversations are so exciting. There's always for me an energy and a buzz when you have these kinds of gender and development and conferences and a lot of passion and people who genuinely believe that they can change and shape the world. Right, and it's funny, and I was going to ask this because I think what we really need to look at is when we come out of UNCTAD, what changes yes. can be activated by having these connections and, and literally harnessing all of this power in one yeah. location. Mm -hmm. How can we look at, at, at outcomes? Well, and what, what, what you find, and I go to the outcomes, what you find a lot of the women who, t who will turn up, who we will hear and participate with, they are actually doing things already. Right. So they're very clear on where the changes are going. What we want to produce as the forum organizers with our consultative committee is a, what we are calling a Bridgetown Declaration, where we gather all our recommendations and where we gather all the, what we want to say, where the policy should go and say to our governments, both here and all the 
CONCACAF member countries, because it, it, you know, it is a, it is a love, very large organization of over 190 members, and to say to all of them, this is what you need to be doing, because the civil society organizations in your respective countries, they are going to be holding your feet to the fire. And we are going to be holding your feet to the fire. So, they, they, so they, they're not only coming together now to say these things. They have been doing it before we come together in this forum. And this is what is exciting because you are going to hear from persons who are doing the things that they are recommending. One of the speakers is going to be the governor general, the new governor general of Belize, a Mayan woman, Her Excellency Floria Salam. And she believes in the protection of indigenous knowledge. And she's an, an, uh, um, an anthropologist and has been doing a lot of work in that area. Don't know how much she's going to get to do now as a governor general, but she has some interesting recommendations for UNCTAD. And Tonya did a fantastic session with women in the creative industries, and they, they have a very good sense of what they are going to offer to governments, what they're going to say. But they're not waiting on the governments they have been doing. But working with the governments, the societies and the economies will improve if those recommendations are taken to heart. But we are going to give all those recommendations at the end of the conference. All right. Thank you. We're going to continue this conversation right after this quick break. I think when women get together, I love the idea of having a certain diversity in the mm -hmm. room because we all learn from each other. Yeah. And one of the things that I always think about when we have certain conferences and events, um, I'm with UNCTAD, I want people to understand because I don't, what I don't want it UNCTAD to be is, mm -hmm. you know, there might be a perception that UNCTAD is taking place up here. So mm -hmm. there's all of the women with titles uh -huh. who have access to this forum, but it's not for me. You know, just a regular woman who's out here trying to work and feed my, my kids. Right. So that is something that I really want you to emphasize so that women know is this for everybody yeah, and it is it is it is for them and it is about them it is it is a forum that is that has been created to talk about women's lives and the different dimensions of things that affect women here in Barbados in the Caribbean and around the world so we definitely want them to plug in and understand when you experience something it is not you in isolation it is a particular way society has for eons perceived women and and unless we challenge our policymakers to change that, it won't change. So come and understand and be part of that. Tonya? Yeah, and, and also for me, knowledge analysis comes from multiple different spheres. So when you look at our program, we have a dynamic um, group of women all very much experts in their different fields. And these include women who are activists for domestic workers' rights and who are domestic workers themselves, women who are trade unionists. So for me, this is, this is a space for everybody to gather um, and to recognize and to validate a range of different kinds of knowledges. Because I think for me, the one thing the Gender Development Forum is seeking to say very clearly is what is the status quo is not working. Definitely not working for us in the developing world. It is not working for women. It is not working for other kinds of groups made minoritized and made vulnerable. And so we need new, fresh thinking and ideas. And those can come from multiple different places. It's interesting, Dr. Mm -hmm. Haynes. You just said something that triggered, um, in preparation for this interview, I got this question actually from one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. And you just said something that triggered it. You just said for all genders. Mm -hmm. And so with the advent of new genders, because mm -hmm. we still need to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. So there's transgender, there's cisgender. Yeah. How does that change the conversation for women and girls, or, or does it even change the conversation? Well, if you believe in justice, it shouldn't change because then all genders are entitled to justice, whether cisgender, transgender, the traditional understanding of women, the traditional understanding of men, people who don't define themselves as, as, as occupying any traditional gender. The point, if you come at this from a perspective of justice, then it is relevant and it, and, 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 and we, it is inclusive and everyone has a right to be here. Everyone has a right to 
live in a society where they're treated as an equal, where they're respected, whether you know economic decisions affect them equally, uh, or, or political decisions that they're not denied that that the interest is not in their sexuality for qualification or their sexual orientation. So that that is that is a part of a, a, a wider conversation. But if you start from the pers perspective of justice, then you realize then then we all are entitled to justice, irrespective of what gender we occupy or you want to label us with, we are entitled to justice. Yeah. And, I, I, and I think the, the forum itself pays attention to that. The forum itself pays attention to moving out from a very narrow understanding of what are women's issues or gender issues. It takes on what exists in society and addresses it. Yeah, I came across um, some interesting information recently that was talking about the, the glass ceiling and income levels between men and women. Mm -hmm. And it said men and women in the Caribbean actually get paid pretty, pretty equally in terms of what the job is, but the difference is that the woman is usually more qualified. And I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. What's your response to that? So I would say, um, I know the Inter-American Development Bank had a study that looked at, it looked at um, gender, ethnicity, and earnings in multiple countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. And Barbados was one of the countries. The data by now is a bit dated, um, but what it did show is actually that men of, um, if you take men and women of the same age and level of education in Barbados, the gap in income was actually 25% in favor of men, right? And that men, when you look at the data, men were able to do more in terms of income with fewer formal educational qualifications, right? And we, and we know that. And so what I would say is if you are a post person in a government job, everybody is going to be on the same scale. When we talk about differences in, in, in income and gender gaps, we're not saying that people are, you know, or that, that governments are deliberately paying women less when they're doing the same thing. But what we are talking about is the structural valuing of the different areas of the economy mm -hmm. where men and women tend to um, be located, right? And how, so, so a lot of the conversation now is about equal pay for work of equal value because how are you valuing the kinds of work where women tend to be clustered um, and, and a lot of it is low paid yeah. service work so that when you look at men and women and as a group in the Caribbean there actually is very much that gap in favor of men but also the reality that men are able to make more in informal and formal sectors with fewer of those formal qualifications that women have um, yeah. have to have and that's why you see women women have had to be more qualified <laughs> yeah. for, right. to, to occupy certain jobs and the and the pay differential is higher in the private sector because in, in, the, in the governmental sector the public service they introduce some parity in relation to pay but women are later at the table women have come into occupations there was a time if you were a woman and you were a civil servant and you got married you had to resign so there's a notion or, 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 or in terms of um, promotion a lot of women who are married or have families, they suffer because the idea is that they're going to come out of the workforce. They have to take care of children. And this is where, now, in analysis of the Gender and for the Development Forum, we need to, to demonstrate that when women have children, if they want to have children, they're actually contributing to the society. And the society must take care of that. They must have policies in place in both the work in the public sphere at the corporate and the private sphere so that those children have a healthy environment, are well taken care of, and, that, and, and their well-being is not seen as a private matter for, the, for that woman or for the children, that it, it benefits us to, to pay attention to those areas. And that is the kind of thing I'm, we, are, we are speaking about when we say you value what women do and you value the caring work women do, but you don't show that value in, of it by providing the policies that underwrite that and make it easier for women who raise children and men who contribute to, to look after their families. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you both very, very much, Professor Barato and Dr. Tanya Haynes. Thank you too. Wonderful to be able to talk to you. But, and it's always interesting to be able to talk to you and learn a little bit more about how we can all work together to change things for the better. Thank, Thank you, you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been UNCTAD Conversations, and we look forward to having you 
at the table as well as part of the discussion on how we can change things for the better. I'm Belle Holder. Thanks so much for watching.